Hello everyone, my name is Chip, and today we're playing a green-white collect company deck that uses a red beam took to a 5-0 finish in a modern league. Now, I'm not going to be doing a full deck tech, as a link to his deck is available in the description. Here's a look at the deck, and let's get on with some games. We got an unkeepable 7, we got an unkeepable 6, we've mulliganed to 5. Ah, uh, I think we're going to keep double stone forge over collector company. Alright, opponent leads on a planes, passes to us. Is this a taxes deck? Well, we're going to go Razor Verge Thicket, run out Noble Hierarch. We draw the Mirroring Crusader as well. That's something that's fun to put a piece of equipment on. All right, we pass the turn there. Opponent plays a second Plains, runs out their Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, Sword of Fire and Ice. Okay, we draw a Collected Company. Well, that can be very good. Just going to play out Horizon Canopy. We'll run out our own Stoneforge Mystic. It's between Batiskull and Maul, isn't it? Because we can put the Maul on the Mirroring Crusader. I think it's very hard for them to deal with. All right, I'll go for the Maul. And then the next one can get the batter skull if we need it. Pass to them. Now they play a chef at dunes and run out of flicker wisp. Oh, they're flickering their own lands. So they might have path to exile. Okay, and they pass to us. Well, we get our own path to exile. That's pretty cool. Well, we want to hold up path, don't we? Because they want to put the they want to put the sword on the flicker wisp. We're gonna use stone forge. Run out a batter skull. Get in with our stone forge with exalted. Yep, opponent takes it down at eighteen. Pass the turn there. Opponent's got the Giver of Runes, goes to combat, swings in for three. Just going to path that now. Gives them the land they need to equip the sword and put it down in the same turn, but I think we can afford that for now. All right, we also hit the forest. So we can double equipment and we can collect a company. All right, we'll stay back planning on collecting company in their end step. Yep, Stoneforge Mystic puts the sort of Fire and Ice into play. They play an Ajano Castle, play another Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, they've got themselves the Batter Skull. No attacks. Okay, well, Collected Company, come on down. Please hit something good. Yeah, Knight of Autumn Stoneforge Mystic, not bad. We'll attempt to destroy the Sword of Fire and Ice, and we'll tutor up our last sword. Yeah, Sword of Feast and Famine. Draw the land as well. Okay, well then, yeah, let's run out Mirroring Crusader. I'm pretty happy just to pass it there. Opponent activates Stoneforge Mystic, puts the Batter Skull into play. They play a Plains. Got a Flicker Wisp. Okay. What are they targeting with the Flicker Wisp? Their Stoneforge Mystic. No attacks. Well, in their end step, their Stoneforge Mystic's going to come back. What are they getting? They get their own Maul of the Skyclaves. Okay, okay. We'll activate our Stoneforge Mystic. Put Batter Skull into play. Draw a tap land. We'll run it out. We'll activate Stoneforge. Maul into play. Target our Mirroring Crusader. Go to combat and we'll swing. Yep, opponent gets their own Maul of the Skyclaves. Puts it on the Flicker Wisp. I'm going to trade. Oh, does this work how you think it works? <laughs> <laughs> yep, they're more of the Skyclaves fell off. So yeah, you've got protection from white, but you don't kill me. Thanks for that. All right, well, we'll pass to them. Opponent has another Flicker Wisp. So they could flicker their maul. They can re-equip it to something. I oh, know they're just flickering their land. They're getting in. Well, we'll put our Batter Skull in front of their Batter Skull. Turn our Batter Skull to hand. And they're not gaining life. Oh, and they've got the Skyclave Apparition. Yep, going after our Maul. Flicker Wisp returns their land. They pass to us. Barrington Forge Tender. Not particularly helpful right now. So do we think they've got the path? Let's put Sword of Feast and Famine into play. Let's attempt to equip it to a Mirren Crusader. Go to combat and get in. Opponent just brick walls it with a Flicker Wisp. All right, just pass it there. I think we're pretty close to dead. All right, they're pumping the team. Well, we're dead, but we might as well give it a go. Put Batter Skull into play. They got the path. Yep, they've been holding the path the entire game. All right, they got us. Game two, Sword of Light and Shadows coming in for sure. Sword of Fire and Ice could be good as well to help pick off some of their creatures. We can go down the Burrington Forge Tenders, and I think we run it back like that. All right, we get to go first this time. It's a bit slow. Yeah, we're going to mulligan. This one's a bit better. At least we got some interaction. We'll keep. Uh, is it Archon to the bottom? Keep Sword of Feast and Famine? Probably. Lead on Horizon Canopy, pass the turn. Opponent plays a Plains and has the Aether Vial. Okay. And we get the Knight of Autumn, that's good. Well, we're going to play a Forest, pass the turn there. Opponent ticks up the Aether Vial, plays a Plains, runs out of Leon and Arbiter. Okay. Trying to stop us searching. Yeah, I'll waste a path on that. Gets them a land, but that's okay. Get a Collected Company as well, that's all right. Well, we'll go Knight of Autumn. They're activating the Vial. Yep, they've got the Giver of Runes. Yeah, we'll just blow up the Aether Vial. Pass it there. They've got a Chef at Dunes. And they've got a second Vial. Okay. And a Flicker Wisp. Flicker our Knight of Autumn, please. No, they flicker their planes. It saw the line. All right, Flicker Wisp returns the planes. Get another Knight of Autumn, though. That's pretty good. Knight of Autumn comes down. Blow up the Aether Vial. I suppose we could have been saving these for swords, but we'll get there. Yep, opponent plays a Silent Clearing. Sacks it immediately to draw a card. Okay. Swings in for three. Fine by us. Has another Flicker Wisp. Okay. Flickers their Flicker Wisp. 
They're going to take us off a of land for the turn. Yep, yep. They take our Horizon Canopy away for our turn. A Stoneforge Mystic we cannot cast. Gross. Well, our land re-enters. Yep, opponent gets in for six. It's not looking good. We own an Arbiter. Shuts off our Stoneforge line. Passes to us. Okay. I mean, we kind of have to play the Archon of Amiria here, don't we? But then they give it pro white. Gross. All right, well, if they've got the path, they're going to win. All right, Archon of Amiria. Pass the turn there. Skyclave Apparition. All right. It's not looking good at all. Not looking good at all. And they give that pro white. Yep, we're dead. Okay, cool. Good game. <laughs> <laughs> we just got destroyed by taxes. God damn it. All right, we win the die roll. We get to go first this time. And yeah, we're going to keep this one. Lean on Temple Garden tapped. Pass it there. Opponent plays a Flooded Strand. It's a worry. Well, we'll play a Forest. Just use Stoneforge Mystic. Opponent cracks the Flooded Strand. It's a Watery Grave. Untapped. Okay. So Stoneforge Mystic. Yep, they're going to Fatal Push it. That's fine. We will use its ability. And we'll just get a Sword of Feast and Famine. Pass it there. Play an island, so potentially a counter spell here. Pretty gross. Just try for the sword. Okay, it resolved. Good. So if we draw a land, we can go Uriok Champion and equip. Petty Theft, okay. That's fine by me. We want to Petty Theft it. They do nothing and pass to us. Okay. Well, they've still only got the two lands, so do we do the same thing again with the sword? Might as well, right? Soaring Thought Thief. Okay, so it is a milled style deck. It's a rogue deck. Okay. Sure thing. Soaring Thought Thief resolves. So does our sword. Pass it there. And it gets in for one. We mill two, a land, and a Skyclave Apparition. All right, they pass it there. Draw a tap land. That's a little frustrating. Well, we'll just try for the Uriok Champion now. Drown in the Lock. Yep, Drown in the Lock eats away our Uriok Champion. And it gets in. Mills our other Uriok Champion. No, I wanted that. All right, we're down to 15. Mirren Crusader. Yeah, I'll run that out. Yep, you got to drown that because you can't deal with it once it's on board. All right, pass to them. Thought Scour us. Hit a path in a collected company. Surgical Extraction, our Mirren Crusader. Yep, they cannot handle it. Right. Swings in, hoping they don't have another Surgical Extraction for our Skyclave. If they had that, that'd just be a real blowout. All right, well, we're down to 13. Draw a land. Well, we'll play it. Run out the Skyclave. So if they've got Fatal Push, exiling the thing turns it on. And I don't think we're too worried about it. All right, pay some life. Equip the sword. We got a Thieves Guild's Enforcer. Okay, doesn't stop our sword, which is fine. I guess they're hoping to beat in. Yeah, if they get, I think we're pretty safe. If they could bounce the Skyclave, that'd hurt. They got the fetch land. Snapcaster Mage, yeah. Surgical Extraction, gonna target our Skyclaves. Rips two out of our hand. Gets in with their flyer. Take it down to nine. They pass to us. Well, we've got another land. Play out the Ghost Quarter. Crack our Horizon Canopy to draw a card. Draw another land, okay. Well, we're gonna path the Snapcaster. Sack the Horizon Canopy to draw a card. Collected Company. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. Well, we'll path the Thieves Guild Enforcer now. All right. And then we will go to combat. Swing in for four. Sword of Feast and Famine triggers. Untop our lands. They discard a card. And then we are going to collect a company. Ryuk Champion. Knight of Autumn. Two counters on our Knight of Autumn. Gain some life. Pass to them. Ooh, into the story. Opponent draws seven cards. Sorry, draws four cards. <laughs> we need seven cards in our graveyard. Can you imagine that? Draw seven cards in modern? Ugh. An opponent scoops it up. Very nice. Okay. Well, Veil of Summers can come in. Sword of Fire and Ice can come in. They are milling us, so maybe Sword of Light and Shadow is pretty good. Well, they are milling us, so Gaia's Blessing can come in. Sorcery, but still pretty good. Uh, actually, no, let's not bring in the Gaia's Blessing. Let's bring in Rest in Peace. Turn off all the surgicals and stuff. Barrington Forge Tender can go away. What else can go away? Well, we bring in non-creatures, so we'll trim a couple of collected companies. Not all of them, just a couple. And then we will trim... We'll trim one Archon and one Knight of Autumn. Run it back like that. So we've got two rest in peace, but nothing else. Mulligan that. Well, now we've got no colored sources, so we're mulliganing that. Now we have no lands whatsoever, so we're going to mulligan that. Oh boy. All right, I guess we're keeping this one. Put three cards to the bottom. Okay. Uh, Ghost Quarter. Skyclave, I guess. <laughs> oh boy, what else? Is it Forest? It's Forest, yeah. Am I getting to four? I don't know how we're going to win that one. All right, goes Polluted Delta. Passes. Okay. Well, we do draw the rest in peace, so that's pretty good. Well, we'll play Horizon Canopy and we'll just pass it there. Opponent cracks the Polluted Delta for a Watery Grave. Untapped. Well, we're just going to pass. They run out of Thieves Guild Enforcer. They play a tap land. Okay. So Drown in the Lock doesn't work now. And they Thought Scour us. Ooh, that's a Maul of the Skyclaves. They swing in for one. Well, we'll take it. 
Another Horizon Canopy is not bad. Well, we'll just go planes. Run out the rest in peace while they're tapped out. All right, it resolves. Okay. Ooh, permanent plans a fancy land, enters tapped. I see. Well, they swing in for one. Take it down to 17. Forest, not bad. Well, well, we shouldn't have let on Forest. We should have let on Horizon Canopy so we could keep Path to Exile up, but live and learn. Rook Champion, come on down. Yep, opponent plays a Soaring Thought Thief. Let's us mill a bunch of cards. But we've got an Uriok champion. We've got a Mystic Sanctuary. They swing in with the Flyer. Yep, we mill another two cards. No blockers. Oh, we're down to 15. Ah, see now if we'd played the Horizon Canopy, we could have used the Path, but now we can't. We're getting punished for that. Poorly sequencing will be my undoing. All right, well, we're going to sack the Horizon Canopy to draw a card. Stoneforge Mystic's not bad. Well, we'll play the Razor Verge Thicket. Play Stoneforge Mystic. Gain some life. Let's see what we're going to search up. We got Fire and Ice and Sword of Feast and Famine. I think it's Fire and Ice because we could put that on the Uriok Champion. We've got protection from their entire deck. Yeah, that seems like a plan. Gain a life. They fail to push the Stoneforge Mystic. That's fine. Play a Mystic Sanctuary. Play the Sundali Visions. Get to look at the top six. Archmage's Charm. Gross. It's okay, they can't use it this turn. They get in for one. All right, we're down to 15. We haven't seen any other counters except for Drown in the Lock and Archmage's Charm. Lead on Horizon Canopy. I don't know what that would help stop, but we're going to try. Sword of Fire and Ice. All right, it resolved. Pass it there. Ooh, opponent casts a Petty Theft on our Uruk Champion. Okay, so they're going to be able to counter it with the Archmage's Charm on the way back down. They swing in for two. Hurts my feelings. Well... We're going to sacrifice the Horizon Canopy to draw a card. Ugh. Okay. Well, we'll play the Razor Verge Thicket tapped. Because, yeah, they're just going to Archmage's Charm it, aren't they? All right, we'll hold it in hand until we can double spell. Pass it there. Opponent gets the Brazen Borrower down. Down to 33 cards in our library. It's not insignificant. I mean, the fact that we're facing down this much damage is more significant, but it's still not great. It's turn seven, and we've drawn two creatures this game. And they were both in our opening hand. Yep, they swing in. Down to eight. They pass to us. Knight of Autumn. Well, we'll lead on Knight of Autumn. All right, they do counter that one. Well, we've got the land. We're going to try. Oriok Champion. Spell Snare. Okay. Yeah, they got us. Opponent attacks us again. We're going to need a pretty impressive turn to get back into this. We're down to three. Yeah. Well, Field of Ruin's not going to do it, so they got us. All right, I still think the sideboarding is correct. I think we've done the right thing. I just don't think mulliganing to four is exactly a winning line against a control deck. So we, we cast three creatures that game? It's, no, it's not how you want to play. Yes, we would like to play first. What is with these opening hands? <laughs> oh, well, we can't keep that, can we, Mulligan? I mean, yeah, that's better. It's not great, but it's better. Keep it. Put Skyclave Apparition to the bottom. Well, we'll lead on Horizon Canopy and pass the turn there. Opponent plays a Polluted Delta. Passes back to us. Well, we're just going to play a Ghost Quarter. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks their Polluted Delta. Reward your grave untap. Okay. Thought scours us. Well, you know what? Veil of Summer. All right. We draw another land. Not the worst thing in the world. They play an island. And they pass the turn. Okay. Well, we draw a Horizon Canopy. Play that out, but we won't do anything just yet, will we? Spell Snare would stop our Uriok Champion. I suppose we could Ghost Quarter ourselves in response and then cast Veil of Summer. They really can't deal with the Uriok Champion. Knight of Autumn. Yeah, let's go Uriok Champion. They can't really deal with it once it's down except for Brazen Borrower. Resolved. Okay. I like that. Pass to them. They play a Flooded Strand. Surgical Extraction on the Veil of Summer. So choose Target Card in a Graveyard. So we've got this Veil of Summer. Well, we're going to Ghost Quarter ourselves, get ourselves a forest, and then we just better cast our Veil of Summer now. So now we're down on land, but we're up a card. I think that's better. All right, and they pass back to us. Well, draw a Noble Hierarch. Well, I'm not attacking into a Snapcaster Mage, that's for sure. Do we just play something out into a potential counter? Knight of Autumn? Yeah, Knight of Autumn, why not? All right, well, we're going to gain some life, and we will put two counters on it. Pass the turn there. Yep, they crack the Flooded Strand. Is this a fatal push for the Knight of Autumn? Get a watery grave. Tapped. Yep, that's fatal push. Opponent plays a tap land. Passes the turn there. So this is probably an Archmage's Charm that they're holding up then. Cast a Noble Hierarch. Gain a life. Go to combat. Swing in for two. Yep, opponent's got the Snapcaster Mage. We gain a life. They're targeting the Thought Scour. Okay. Well, we're just going to attempt to path the Snapcaster Mage. Yep, that goes away. Yep, they Thought Scour us. Ah, it's a Stoneforge Mystic down. I was really hoping to draw one of those. All right, we'll gain some life back up to 18. Opponent's down to 12. Pass it there. 
And it's got a polluted delta, passes. Well, they're definitely in the driving seat, aren't they? We'll run out of Night of Autumn. Yep, opponent's got the Drown in the Lock. Can is our Night of Autumn. No attacks from us. They run out of Thieves Guild Enforcer. We mill some cards. Another Stoneforge. Come on, I want to draw those. <laughs> Either Stoneforge or some equipment, please. Surgical Extraction on the Stoneforges. Okay, well, we're not drawing those anymore. Opponent's down to one card in hand, though. So if we can draw something and resolve it, I'd be very happy. All right, they pass to us. Draw a planes. Sack the horizon canopy to draw a card. Draw another planes. Okay. Well, might as well give this Archon of Amiria a go. Snapcaster Mage. Okay. Drown in the lock? Yep, for a drown in the lock. The counter owl. Archon of Amiria. And now they have no cards in hand. Soaring Thought Thief. Yep. They are milling us though. We've got to keep that in mind. Ah, they milled our collected company. They pass back to us. Another land. I mean, really? We're not running that many. Just lead on the planes. Pass it there. Yep, opponent gets in for two, down to 19, they pass it to us, we draw the collected company though, okay. What's the chances they drew a counter spell? Do we wait until we can double spell? Alright, it does give them the option to draw into a counter spell, that could be nothing. If they had zero cards in hand, they drew a card for the turn, could be a counter spell, could not be. Ah, we'll just go for it. <laughs> cool, we hit a new <laughs> we gain a life. <laughs> That was, that was pathetic. I mean, it does mean we might be able to start getting in with our real champion. God, we could have hit any number of things. Ugh, I suppose that's the risk you take with company. <laughs> oh, no. All right, opponent fetches. Hey, the good news is we've got all the mana in the world. Wouldn't say no to a Winds of Abandon right now. All right, opponent gets in for two. Fatal pushes the Noble Hierarch. Yep, so now we can't even get in. Sort of Fire and Ice, though. Well, we'll do it now. Do you have an answer, opponent? We're going to attempt. Oh, it's on the Oriok Champion. Okay, so if they've got a Brazen Borrower, we lose. Do we though? Because then we'd still get the Sword and we could put it on the Noble Hierarch. We do still have quite the life total. Fatal Push on the Noble Hierarch. Okay, they don't have Brazen Borrower. Well, Oriok Champion getting in. Uh, we'll shoot down your Thieves Guild, I think. Will we or do we hit them? Hit them down to six. It doesn't kill them any faster, does it? All right, well, we'll just target the Thieves Guild. We draw the Skyclave. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. Oh, they play a land. You've shown your hand, opponent. You can't stop what we're planning on doing. Yep, you got us down to 14. Sort of feast and famine. I mean, don't mind if I do. Swing in. All right, we untap our lands. Skyclave Apparition comes down. Targets your dude. What are you going to do, opponent? Thought Scour. Okay, that's a redraw. Oh, they get to dig. Look at the top six. Reveal an instant or sorcery. What do you hit? Did they they whiff? They whiffed. <laughs> All right, we won. That was that was a tough one. That was that was way tougher than it should have been, but we got there. We got there. All right, we lose the die roll. We get another slow one. We're getting a fair few slow ones, and they reveal a Loris. Ugh, ugh. We'll mulligan that. Mulligan again. Okay, it's got a mixture of lands and spells. We're going to keep this one. They revealed the Loris. Sword of Feast and Famine might be pretty good. We've got to put two cards back. Horizon Canopy. Is it Archon? If we can put that sword on the Forge Tender, we're just loving life. We'll put Archon back. Your move, opponent. Mishra's Bauble. Yep. So leaning more into a Death Shadow than a Prowess stack, I think. Another Bauble. Mm-hmm. Opponent plays a Plains into a Giver of Runes. Oh, no. I hadn't prepped for that. Well, they draw some cards off their baubles. Guess we'll play the pathway as a green land, run out noble hierarch, go. And it plays a plains. Pure sight marrow. One and untap it, look at the top card of your library, you may exile that card. Oh, this is probably some sort of combo deck using that. That's gross. We get the collected company, so we might go plains and sort of feast and famine. Pass it there. And it plays a plains. Has the Stoneforge Mystic. Stoneforge searches up. Paradise Mantle. Okay, so they've got their combo. Question is, are they going for it? Yep, they cast the Paradise Mantle. They equip it. Combo online. Okay, Conjurer's Bauble. Pass to us. We draw the planes. Well, I think we've got to try and go for it now. Hopefully we hit a Knight of Autumn or Skyclave Apparition off this. Yep, that would be them. So we're going to target the Paradise Mantle with the Skyclave Apparition. They can't protect that with Giver of Runes. Mmm. All right, well, they're going off. Can they beat us? Because now they're just going to get another one, aren't they? All right, they got another one. But they exiled it. Okay, they don't want the other one. They're just planning on winning. Well, we'll yield through and see what they're up to. Oh, they're activating the Bauble. Put the other Bauble on the bottom of their library. Okay, and the Skyclave Apparition resolves. Pass it to them. 
There's their other Paradise Mantle. Well, that's their spell for the turn. Yep, they equip it. And they pass to us. Okay, well, we draw a Ghost Quarter. Not doing an awful lot with that, are we? Well, we'll attempt to equip the Sword of Feast and Famine to our Archon. Go to combat, get in. Yep, hit them for five. They have to discard a card. We get to untap our lands. All right. Well, we won't play out the Barrington Forge Tender. We'll just pass it there. All right. Is this the turn they beat us? If they've got a Thassa's Oracle, they basically get to win unless they make a mistake. I'm assuming with the speed they're going, they've got the Oracle in hand. Yep, that's a Thassa's Oracle. All right, they win. All right. Leon and Arbiters seem good. Does anything else seem good? Sort of Fire and Ice, I guess. Might be a bit better than Sort of Feast and Famine. There's not a whole lot else, is there? Well, we'll trim some Burringtons and we'll trim an Uriok Champion. Run it back like that. Yes, I would like to play first. Yes, I would like to keep this hand. It's not bad, is it? All right, Razor Verge Thicket into Noble Hierarch. Pass the turn there. Opponent plays a Silent Clearing into a Giver of Runes. Passes the turn. Knight of Autumn, that's not a bad one. Well, we'll play Horizon Canopy. Run out the Noble Hierarch. Run out the Stoneforge Mystic. We will use its ability. Ah, uh, is it more? I don't think Batterskull matters too much. Yeah, we're going to get more of the Skyclaves. Pass it there. Opponent plays a Bauble. Yep. Cracks it immediately. Plays an Ink Moth Nexus. Gets their own Stone Forge. Okay. Paradise Mantle enters the revealed card zone. Sure. And they pass to us. They get to draw a card in our upkeep. We draw a land. All right. Well, we're going to activate our Stone Forge. Sort of fire and ice into play. Equip it to a Noble Hierarch. Swing in. So they have to block with the Stone Forge and give protection with the giver. Yep. Pass it there. If we draw a land, we can put in Knight of Autumn and more of the Skyclaves. They play a Plains. They put Loris into hand, and they pass it there, okay. Well, we do draw a land. Think we're going to lead on Stoneforge Mystic? Get ourselves a Batterskull. We'll activate this Stoneforge Mystic, put more into play, more will target our Noble Hierarch. Go to combat, swing with our Noble Hierarch. Swing in for six, it's not insignificant. Opponent takes it, we're going to target the Giver with the Sword of Fire and Ice. Giver goes away, we draw a Skyclave Apparition. All right, that's pretty fun. So now we got Knight of Autumn and Skyclave Apparition to stop them comboing. Yep, opponent runs out the Loris, gets back the Mishra's Bauble, cracks the Bauble, plays a Conjurer's Bauble. Yep, draws a card off the Mishra's Bauble. All right, we draw a land. That's actually pretty good. So we'll play that. So I think we go Knight of Autumn, target the Conjurer's Bauble. So four, five, six, and two. So we can't quite get there this turn. Skyclave Apparition comes down, gets rid of the Loris. All right, Noble Hierarch gets in. Double Exalted. It's another six. No blocks from our opponent. Blow up your Stoneforge Mystic. We draw a card. Okay. Well, you've got this turn to win, opponent. Can you do it? They play a Silent Clearing. They crack the Silent Clearing and they scoop it up. Okay, that went really well. I'm just going to run it back as it is. I, I don't think we can take anything out without hurting our game plan. More than putting stuff in will help. Yeah, we've got interaction for their combo and we've got an Archon of Amiria. I'm totally fine with that. I'm going to keep. Opponent leads on a Plains into a Sagada's Aid. Okay, so they might be trying to go for some sort of Hammer Time win now. Well, we're just going to lead on Plains and pass. We draw the Mirren Crusader as well. That's good. All right, they've got the Ink Moth Nexus. Yep. So yeah, an Infect Hammer Time win is definitely on the cards for them. Spell Skite, okay, sure. Temple Garden as well. Well, we'll play Planes, stop on their upkeep. Or maybe they're going to go for it as well. Oh, if they're going to go for it, we've got Double Path. That's fine by me. Yep, they've got the other Ink Moth. Steel Shaper's Gift, yep. You getting Hammer Time? Yeah, they get the Colossus Hammer. You are a Mana Short opponent. Paradise Mantle. Oh, I like that. That's clever. That's very clever. Now they're not a Mana Short. They animate the Ink Moth Nexus. Flying and Infect. Okay. They go to combat. They attack. Sure, we'll take one Infect. No blocks from us. Ah, uh, they play the Colossus Hammer. Well, I mean, I guess we'll path your Infect creature in response. You're redirecting it to Spell Skate. Okay. Well, that resolved. So then I guess we'll path your Infect creature in response. Huh? Did I do good? <laughs> Very nice. All right. So we still could die to the other one equipping it if they've got a way to equip it without paying mana. So I think we have to Knight of Autumn the Colossus Hammer or the Sagada's Aid. Ugh. Archon of Emeria has flying. But if they've got path, path another art. Yeah, they could still potentially beat us here. All right. So we're not out of the woods just yet. Rising Canopy. Knight of Autumn. Boy, if they've got another Hammer Time in hand, we're in trouble. But they did search up for the first one, so... All right, we'll target the Hammer Time. Pass it there. If they draw a Hammer Time, we are dead. If they put Loris in hand, we are in trouble. 
Oh, they've got the land. Yeah, that's Loris in hand. Okay, they're going to go for the Colossus Hammer line again. Oh, they've got the Pure Sight too. So they can go for the combo win as well. They've got us on multiple fronts. Multiple, multiple, multiple fronts. And we draw the Knight of Autumn as well. Okay, so if we don't kill Paradise Mantle, they equip it. They mill until they hit Fastest Oracle and they win. If we do play Knight of Autumn and blow up Paradise Mantle, they play Loris. And if they've got a land, they don't even need the land. They can, uh, oh no, they still need a land for this because it's got one mana equip. Okay. So they can play Loris, three mana. Animate this. If they play a land, they can play Colossus Hammer it and they win. It's got flying, hasn't it? All right, well, we're going to play our Temple Garden tapped and we'll run out the Archon of Emeria. Hope that's enough. They could even just put the hammer on the Pure Sight mirror. Ugh. Well, yeah, we'll swing in for two. Maybe they'll block. No, nope, they're down to 16 though. Okay. Their deck is very complicated and I kind of, I kind of love it. I kind of love it. But now with Archon, they can't play... Loris and Hammer in the same turn. Yeah, so they play Loris, they equip the Paradise Mantle. All right. Stoneforge Mystic is not particularly helpful now. So we could try and blow up Sagarda's Aid and they've still got the combo online. Mm. I think we're gonna collect a company. Hope to hit a couple of Skyclaves maybe. Archon of Emeria and a Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, so we may be dead, just maybe. Well, we will use Stoneforge's ability. We'll get the Sword of Fire and Ice. Swing in for two. Okay, so they can only cast one spell, but they get to combo off. All right, not a lot we can do. Well, we'll just yield. So they get to get the Tharsis Oracle to hand. They get to put the Tharsis Oracle on top of their deck. Then they get to mill out. Yeah, so we're pretty dead. Unless I'm missing something, we're dead. And so then if we had played the Knight of Autumn targeted Paradise Mantle, they would have done this in response, got the Tharsis Oracle to hand. Then they would have played the Paradise Mantle from Graveyard with the Loris, gone off again, and then they'd have to deal with our... Archon of Emeria? Yeah, we've um we've made a mistake. We would have got an extra turn had we Knight of Autumn to the Paradise Mantle. I don't think we would win from there because then they could just put, I don't know, we still had a flyer. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but pretty sure they've got us. There it is. And that's the win for them. Sometimes you just get comboed out. GG. All right, we win the die roll. We will play first. Yeah, we'll keep this. We can't play the Uriok Champion, but we can play the Stoneforge Mystic. And it reveals a Loris. Well, we're gonna lead on Razor Verge Thicket, pass the turn there. Opponent plays a Blood Crypt to a Monastery Swiss Spear. So we're really hoping for a land that we can play this Uriok Champion off. All right, we're down to 19. They pass it there. It's not a land that we can play the Uriok Champion off. Well, we'll just run out the Stoneforge Mystic. Yes, um, let's get Maul of the Skyclaves. Means we can cast it if they kill the Stoneforge. Just pass it there. Well, if we draw a land and they kill the Stoneforge, that is. All right, they play a Sacred Foundry. They're splashing white as well. Oh, that's how they get around Uriok Champion. Yep, they run out the other Swift Spear. Is that a mistake? They should have played that first. Seal of Fire. It's getting pretty gross. It's getting pretty gross pretty fast. Yep, blows up the Stoneforge Mystic. We're going to take five at least. Yep, we're down to 14. Come on, White Land. Path to Exile. Not a White Land, but not bad. All right, well, we'll do nothing and pass. Oh, untapped Land. Thought Seize. All right, well, that's going to take the Uriok Champion I'm willing to bet. I don't think it much matters. We're probably going to be dead before it gets to resolve. They take a path, okay. So if we path one of the Monastery Swiss Spears, we halve the damage we're taking this turn. But I'm willing to bet they've got Scourge of the Skyclaves in hand. So then we need a land to deal with that. So they took the path so he wouldn't be able to deal with that. And they might have white removal for the Uriok Champion. But if we take this hit and say they've got two one mana burn spells in hand, which is six, and they're hitting us for eight. So they've got exactly lethal if they've got two one mana burn spells in hand. So yeah, we have to path now. All right, we take two, then 12. Death Shadow, not Scourge. Okay, they pass to us. Ghost Quarter. Are we ghost quartering ourselves to put this Skyclay, uh, put this Oriok Champion down? I think we are. Oh, that doesn't feel right, but there's nothing else we can do. And then after that, any land unlocks all our other cards? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're going to do it. Blow up our Field of Ruin. Use its ability. We're going to get a Plains. Run out the Oriok Champion. Hope you don't have a mono white piece of removal. Pass it there. And a land to Skyclave, that Death Shadow would be good. All right, they put Loris into hand. They go to combat. Um, so they can play one spell, maybe. I think it's still correct to block Monastery Swift Sphere. Okay, all right, and they pass to us. Razor Verge Thicket, that's what we wanted. Skyclave Apparition coming down. Take out that Death Shadow, gain a life. Now, unfortunately, they can just Loris and get back the Seal of Fire and blow up the Skyclave, but then that gets them a 1-1, one -one, which I'm okay with. Pass the turn there. And then if they go for the Bauble over the Seal of Fire, maybe we can put the Maul on the Skyclave Apparition. Protect it that way. Guess we'll see. Yep, Loris comes down. 
Gain a life, up to 12. Yep, seal of fire. Yep, they blow up our Skyclave, get themselves a 1-1. No attacks from them, that's good. Pass to us. Wow, we draw the Ghost Quarter. I'm okay with that. So we could Collected Company. All right, well, we'll just hold off on doing anything right now. We'll make them take some action. Yep, Bloodstained Mire. They get back the Seal of Fire. Do we respond to that? No, we don't. Go to combat. They attack. In response, we're going to collect a company. Skyclave Apparition. Archon of Amiria. Put the rest in any order. I mean, as far as hits goes, those are some of the better ones we could have got. Skyclave Apparition is going to target the Loris. Now they're stuck playing one spell. They've already played the Seal of Fire this turn, so they can't cast anything. So the Seal of Fire has to be their only interaction for the turn, which I think means we don't block the illusion with the Archon of Emiria. They're thinking about it. Loris is going to go. If they blow up the, uh, the Skyclave Apparition now, Loris just goes and they don't get a token. So they have to wait for it to resolve. Oh, they're cracking the Bloodstained Mire. Do they think they can cast something? Because you can't. I'm not going to tell them that, though. Oh, they get the snow-covered mountain. All right, Apparition resolves. Or your champion resolves. We're all the way up to 15. Go to blocks. Throw this in front of this. And we'll throw the Skyclave in front of the illusion. Okay, we eat the illusion. They pass to us. Path to exile. Hmm, it's a good one. It's definitely a good one. So we don't have flash on the mall of the Skyclaves, do we? Ah, so we can't use it to protect anything. Well, we'll go to combat, swing in with the Skyclave Apparition. Hmm, opponent's killing it now. Sounds good to me. They get their 3-3, three, three, we gain a life. We'll run out Maul of the Skyclaves. Target the Archon of Emiria. Fatal push. Okay, on our Archon of Emiria, that's fine. Had to try. Pass to them. Mishra's Bauble, yep. Yeah. Cracks it immediately. Has a look and sees what we're got going on. Swings in with the Illusion. Well, we're just going to path it. They pass to us. They draw a card off their bauble. Get another Skyclave. All right, well, we'll hold on to that, I think. Do we just equip the Uriok Champion this turn? Because eventually they might draw something with white in it, mightn't they? Well, we're going to try. All right, we got a 3-3 first strike with flying. Just pass it there. It's going to be hard for them to get around that. All right, they play another land. Oh, Scourge of the Skyclaves. Have I got an answer to that? <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, do we even need to gain four life? So we could cast Skyclave Apparition, target the Monastery Swift Spear, and then if they kill the Skyclave Apparition, another 1-1 one -one enters, so then we gain two life. Scourge of the Skyclave is down to a 1-1, one -one, and then we play the Knight of Autumn and it dies. I like that a lot. Or we might want to save the Skyclave for something a bit bigger. Yeah, we'll just go Knight of Autumn for now. We will just gain four life. All right. Well, when it enters, we gain one life, and we'll go for four life. If they've got a skull crack, now is the turn. Lightning Bolt targets us. Okay, still shrinks your dude to a 1-1. One -one. Pass the turn there. And what you don't know is we've got a second one. All right, Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, we'll run that out. You have a burn spell opponent? Nope, they scoop it up. They've seen enough. Okay, sideboarding against this one. We'll bring in Burrington Forge Tender. We'll bring in Sword of Light and Shadow. Do we bring in the Sword of Fire and Ice as well? Couldn't hurt. Go down Maul. We got Veil of Summers. Yeah, we got Veil of Summers. Just go down two collected companies. And what else? Just go down all the collected companies. I think we do. We go down all the collected companies. All right, we'll run it back like that. So our opponent gets to go first, but this is a very keepable hand. We've got all our protection creatures and we've got removal. So we're going to keep. Opponent plays a Bloodstained Mire. Cracks it. Yep. Blood Crypt. Runs out the Swiss Spear. Okay. Bauble as well. Okay. They're going for a real fast turn. Cracks the Bauble. Swings in for two. Take two down to 18 and they pass to us. Razor Verge Thicket. Well, we're going to run out the Razor Verge Thicket into Burrington Forge Tender. Pass it there. Thought Seize. Gotta let it go. Is it Uriok Champion? Yep. They take out Uriok Champion. Well, hopefully we draw into our Sword of Light and Shadow. We got the Sacred Foundry. And they just pass without attacking. Okay. Well, we'll play the pathway as a white land, and we'll just pass it there. Play out a bauble, sacrifice the bauble, play a sunbaked canyon, and they put Loris into hand. Okay, so they're going to try and outdraw us with the Loris. Pass to us. They draw with the bauble. Horizon canopy, not bad. Play Razor Verge Thicket. Do we Skyclave them now? I think we'll save Skyclave for a Loris. So then I guess we'll just run out the Mirren Crusader. It's a lightning rod for a burn spell but that's okay all right they've got the land fatal push on our burrington forge tender hmm i will sacrifice it yeah they bolt our mirroring crusader stop that swiss spear getting in for damage okay they pass to us archon of amiria that's a good one well temple garden tapped run out the archon of amiria so they got a loris in hand oh they're sacrificing the aridmisa now 
get a snow covered mountain and they're going to kill it on our turn no they're just cracking the sunbaked canyon okay hoping to draw some answers for it maybe so they got loris in hand and three unknowns no blocks from us scourge of the skyclaves okay we draw a ghost quarter as well mm. lead on horizon canopy and we're just going to draw a card off it stoneforge mystic okay okay so yeah i mean stoneforge mystic is the way to go i think so we can play a batter skull straight away or we can play a batter skull with the mana we have sword of feast and famine doesn't do a lot untaps our lands but we've got the archon so if we go sort of light and shadow they can't fail to push anything and i don't think they have any four damage burn spells five damage on the archon okay yeah sword of light and shadow and if we can equip that to the archon we're laughing all right pass to you opponent and it also gains his life which is mm, love gaining life all right they're swinging in um no blocks from us this turn all right well we're down to 13 so now scourge is a 7-7 seven, seven. that's gross might be worth just sky claving that now all right best case scenario they get themselves a 2-2 two, two. we pass it there fatal push targets our archon of amiria okay had to be done though okay well we'll activate our stone forge sword of light and shadow into play another sky clave okay well, we're going to attempt to target the Stoneforge Mystic with the sword. Go to combat, get in. Opponent blocks. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Three mana. What costs three mana? Colligan's Command? Okay, that's pretty funny. Yeah, that's that's pretty funny. <laughs> well, Skyclave comes down. Ichi Monastery Swift Spear. All right, so they can Loris and Bauble and then whatever they've got in hand as well. All right, so they got a Swift Spear. Cracking the Arid Mesa. They're down to 10. We've got a fair whack of protection creatures left in the deck all right here's loris loris gets back a bauble all right the draw engines online so we gotta hope we stop hitting lands okay well we'll just take four for now hopefully we can draw out of this okay they draw a card off their bauble knight of autumn that's not a bad one we might we'll play it game life while they're tapped out could put counters on it then they have to throw a burn spell at it just kind of like gaining life but then they could bolt it and hit us anyway we're gonna gain life it means any scourge the skyclaves they play are a little bit more manageable do we attack? They're down to eight. No, we don't attack. Not yet. Thought seize. Okay. So do they draw a death shadow? They are down to six. Loris does let them gain life though. So if they attack with everything, we got to block Loris. Also takes out their draw engines. They probably won't attack with Loris. All right. They play and crack their bauble. They swing in. All right. They are attacking with the Loris. All right. Well, we'll go to blocks. Throw you in front of a Loris. Just take the rest. To Mer Battle Rage. Is that going to get us? I think that might get us. Might be enough. Oh no, they're putting it on the Loris to protect it. Clever. We're going to gain a bunch of life. They're all the way up to nine. Okay. We're down to two. Are we dead? You got you got the burn spell for us, opponent? Are we dead? Guess not. Not yet. Are we dead now? We've got a sword of fire and ice, but I don't think that's going to help us right now. Well, I mean, I'll give it a go. I will give it a red hot go. Sword of fire and ice. Attempt to equip. Go attacking. No blocks from our opponent. We'll deal two damage to the Loris. We draw a path. Okay. So maybe they don't, they need to draw no non creature spells <laughs> and no haste creatures. Ah, oh, that's a seal of fire. They got us. All right, we're done. <laughs> All right. Game three. What do we want? What do we want? Rest in peace. Do we want the collected companies back in? I did kind of miss having them. Go up the collected company. I'll go down the sort of feast and famine. I don't actually like that one in this matchup. Anything else we can go down? We've got two collected companies. Do we trim a single Stoneforge Mystic? We'll go down one Stoneforge... Oh, trimming creatures feels bad, doesn't it? All right, we'll go down one Stoneforge Mystic. We've got two collected companies. We've got a bunch of protection creatures. See if this is enough. Yeah, we'll keep this. Go Razor Verge Thicket into Noble Hierarch. Pass it there. And it goes Arid Mesa. Cracks it. Blood Crypt. Ooh, Black Thought Seize. That's Veil of Summer gone. The one time they don't lead on Monastery Swift Spear. Another Razor Verge Thicket's not bad, though. Well, we'll go Plains. Knight of Autumn. Do we gain life? Do we gain life or do we put counters on it? Ah, we'll just gain life. Give ourselves a nice little buffer. And then maybe next turn we can start getting in for three a turn. All right, they got the marsh flats. Another thought seize. Okay, well, we got nothing. You're down to 13. All right, and they pass the turn. Well, we draw another land. Well, I really don't want to flood out. I'm glad we've got the collected companies in. Do we attack? Even though they might have a death shadow? I think we got her. We've got plenty of ways to deal with a death shadow. There's none of them are in our hand right now. All right, they're cracking the marsh flats. This is a fatal push. Got the shrine, untapped. Path to exile on our Knight of Autumn. Okay, sure. Just get up plains. Okay, that's one less land in our deck. Opponents on two mana with no creatures. Okay, we draw another land. Oh, this must be my record league for the number of lands I've drawn. All right, well, we'll get in for one. <laughs> 
they bolt it. Okay, so I don't think they've got a lot going on creature-wise. Maybe they've just got a couple of Scourge of the Skyclaves. They put Loris into hand. Okay, please draw something good. All right, Knight of Autumn's not bad. Our life total is pretty high. All right, we'll put counters on our Knight of Autumn. Perhaps start applying some pressure. Oh, they've got the Swamp. Yep, Loris comes down. They pass the turn there. Stoneforge Mystic. Now that's something I can get used to. Stoneforge Mystic. Do we get Light and Shadow? Could we get Fire and Ice. We can take out that Loris. We'll get Light and Shadow. Play our Ghost Quarter. Force the action now, hey? <laughs> they scoop it up they didn't have anything to deal with it very nice very nice okay game two was a bit rough but i liked that game a lot we get to go first and yes we're gonna keep this one play temple garden we will shock ourselves and we'll run out the noble hierarch pass it there all right opponent plays a temple garden untapped and runs out of birds of paradise okay we draw another uriok champion as well so do we lead on uriok champion or do we play Knight of Autumn, put counters on it, and start beating in? I think we might be the aggressor here. Play it as a 4-3. If they want to spend removal on it, that's fine by me. All right, they got the Arid Mesa. They crack it. Is this Zoo, maybe? They get the Mountain. Okay. Stoneforge. Okay. Stoneforge gets Batter Skull. Okay. Yep, Zoo. Stoneforge Zoo. Sure thing. Well, we got some great answers to Batter Skull. Uriok Champion and the like. We draw our own Stoneforge. Well, we'll run out Stoneforge. We will use its ability. Do we get our own Batter Skull? Feast and Famine? I think we'll start on Batter Skull. It's a good, strong choice. Run out the Uriok Champion. We could have sequenced that better and gained a life, I suppose. Do we just attack? Yeah, we attack. All right, opponent takes it down to 12. Opponent plays the Windswept Heath. Yep. Swings in for three. Well, we're happy to take that. Down to 15. Pass it there. Draw a Razor Verge Thicket, eh? Well, we'll play the Razor Verge Thicket. We'll run out Uriok Champion. Gain some more life. No attacks from us. Opponent cracks their Windswept Heath. Gets a Sacred Foundry. Tapped. All right. Puts their batter skull into play. We gain a bunch of life. Pass to them. Opponent plays the Wooded Foothills. Cracks it. Gets a forest. It's Bloodbraid Elf. Five mana. Equipping the batter skull. I see. I see. To the wild and the cattle. Swings in. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Do we just take this this time? Could block with our own batter skull. We have to pay three mana to bounce the batter skull, put it back into play. That is the question. Either way, they're gaining seven life. So it's do we kill the Nakatl with Knight of Autumn and Batter Skull? Or do we just block with the Batter Skull? All right, well, we'll put our Batter Skull into play. And yeah, we're going to try and consume theirs, I think. Go to blocks, block and block. Okay, draw the land as well. It's very good. All right, then we'll just play a Knight of Autumn. Blow up your Batter Skull. Swing in for two. So we're empty-handed. Our opponent is not. They play a Horizon Canopy. Skyclave Apparition. Okay. Well, we're going to gain a bunch of life. They're targeting the Stoneforge Mystic. Nothing we can do. Play another Birds of Paradise. Yeah, I mean, you're just giving us a bunch of life. And the Thalia. Okay. No attacks from them. Turn the Batter Skull to our hand. Draw a Forest. Yeah, I guess we'll just run out the Batter Skull, hey? Gain a bunch of life. Pass it there. Next turn, we can pretty freely start getting in with Batter Skull. Love to draw a collected company. Ooh, they're cracking the Horizon Canopy. Playing the Windswept Heath. Loris of the Dream Den. Okay. Well, this could get out of hand quickly. So now they can block our Batter Skull all day. It's a lot of one mana creatures. Engineered explosives would be nice, but unfortunately we don't have them. All right, collect a company into a Skyclave Apparition, please. I mean, I'll take a Feast and Famine. It means they have to block with actual creatures. So then what do we put this on? Do we put it on the Batter Skull? So what means they can only block with their white creatures, which means they can get back their Stoneforge to get back more equipment. Ugh, that doesn't feel good. I mean, we, want, we are gaining an awful lot of life though. So we're, yeah, all right. Does stop them holding cards in their hand. They can't get back the Skyclave Apparition with Loris, so that's kind of okay. All right, swinging in for seven. Yeah, blocks with Stoneforge. They crack the Windswept Teeth. Yeah, it's planes. Okay. So this means they get to tutor up their other equipment pieces. What are they getting this time? A birds with a sort of fire and ice would slowly rip us apart. I mean, they've got enough matter to put it on, so I don't even think there's anything slow about it. Okay, Embercleave. Uh, when Embercleave enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Attack equipped creature gets plus one plus one, has double strike and trample. Okay, no attacks from our opponent. Fair enough. Pass to us. Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, well, Stoneforge. Get ourselves a maul of the Skyclaves. Get ourselves a big beefy boy. Swing in. All your flies are green. Are we going to make him discard that Embercleave? Yep, goes off. You put it in response. Yep, they put the Embercleave into play in response. They have to attach it to a creature they control. If they attach it to a flyer, Batterskull can block it all day. We're in a good position. 
They attach it to Loris, trying to gain some life. I see, I see. Okay, pass to you. What did you get? Something to deal with our dude? We're on 60 life. We've gained 40 life this game. Probably more because we had lost life as well, but... All right, opponent equips Embercleave to Thalia. Passes to us. Well, we'll go to combat. Attack with our big boy. Puts more of the Skyclaves into play. Yeah, targets the Thalia. Well... We're gonna path it. Be surprised if you have an answer for that. Hey, we got there. All right, so against this deck, Arbiters might be good. Yeah, I like Arbiters over Barrington Forge Tender. Rest in peace, because I got the Lorises. Yeah, I could see that. We'll trim a couple of Stone Forges because we've got the Leonin Arbiters, and then we'll just go down one Collected Company. All right, run it back like that. Yeah, I'll keep this one. They play an Arid Misa. They pass the turn. We'll just play a Plains and pass the turn. We're getting some good equipment as well. Maul feels good. All right, they crack their Arid Misa for a Temple Garden tapped. Pass the turn. Play a Sacred Foundry untapped. They've got the Stone Forge. Okay. Well, we've got the Batter Skull. Noble Hierarch as well. All right. So do we lead on that? I think we do. We lead on that. Then that way we can collect a company next turn if that's what's best. And then we can do the Uruk Champion later. Pass it there. All right, they play an Arid Misa. They crack it. Get themselves a Mountain. Lightning Bolt, our Noble Hierarch. Okay. Play a Wild and a Cattle. So Batter Skull isn't coming into play this turn. Okay. They're just going to swing in for one. Sure. Pass to us. Razor Verge Thicket's pretty good. We just play that. Yeah, we'll just play the Uruk Champion. And we can start getting fancy with equipment and stuff later. All right, opponent's got a Field of Ruin. Swings in. No blocks from us. Embercleave? No Embercleave. All right. Passes to us. Path to Exile. We will play this as a white land. Pass the turn there. We got a collected company. Do we run out our own collected company now? We'll let them go first. Skyclave Apparition, Scavenging Ooze, yeah. So Skyclave's gonna eat our champion. Gain some life. Pass to you. They play a Plains. Get another Stoneforge Mystic. They do get the Embercleave. Okay. They swing in. So they can't cast the Embercleave. All right, well then collect a company. Mirren Crusader, big old Knight of Autumn. Go to blocks, block here, block here. Embercleave coming down. Forgot about Stoneforge being able to put it into play. Yep, they put it on their Skyclave. And Scooze is going to eat our Noble Hierarch. Yep, but that's okay. We eat their Wild and the Cuddle. And they pass to us. Well, I mean, a mole on a Mirren Crusader does kill them pretty quick, doesn't it? Mirren Crusader's a 4 4. Swing in. Opponent takes it down to nine. Pass the turn there. Play a Wooded Foothills. Yep, Scavenging Ooze. Gonna eat our Knight of Autumn. Crack the Wooded Foothills. Need another creature. Yep, Scavenging Ooze. Goes to combat. Getting in with the crew. Path the Skyclave. Get an Illusion. Illusion's just gonna jump in front of that. Scavenging Ooze. We're down to nine. Loris of the Dream Den. Gets back a Wild Nakatl. They pass to us. Ghost Court is not all that impressive right now. Still play it out. Attack with the Mirren Crusader. Okay, opponent's down to one, and we'll run out Batter Skull. We'll see if we can get him from there, because they've got a Batter Skull in hand, don't they? Oh, Path, okay, they got us. Yeah, that gets us, all right. Well played, opponent. All right, so what do we want now? We have a Sword of Fire and Ice over one Noble Hierarch, I think is correct. Run back like that. All right, hopefully we get a better game this time. I like this, we're going to keep this. So potentially turn to Ghost Caught them out of the game. Or turn to Archon of Emeria. They could just bolt the bird, though. It's a very valid line, in which case we just cast Rest in Peace. All right, well, Horizon Canopy, run out the Noble Hierarch. Pass it there. They mult to six. Okay, they play a Wooded Foothills. They crack it. Get a Stomping Ground. Untap. They got their own Noble Hierarch. Okay, we did draw the path, though. Ghost Quarter. Run out Arbiter. Path their Noble Hierarch. Okay, Windswept Heath. Yeah, they crack it. They don't know about Arbiter. <laughs> okay. Arbiter stops you searching, opponent. Oh, and now you bolt the Arbiter. Yeah, you mucked up the order of operations there, didn't you? All right, so you're down a Mana Dog and you're down a Land. And you're down a Burn Spell. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Another Horizon Canopy. It's okay. Oh, well, just run out the Archon of Amiria. Now their land's enter tapped. Non-basic land's enter tapped. Yep, they've got the Wild and the Cuddle. Okay, well, we'll go to combat. Swing in. Exalted Triggers. Down to 13. And yeah, I don't see any harm in running out the Batter Skull. I mean, there's an argument that we should have played this, the Branch Loft Pathway on the white side, but that's okay. All right, now they're cracking their Windswept Heath. You're getting a basic. Yep, they get a basic planes. Engineered Explosives on zero. Okay, you're going to take your whole turn to get rid of my Batter Skull germ token fine with that all right they've definitely got more cards in hand but we're ahead on board ish Ariok champion as well okay we'll run out Ariok champion go to combat swing in for three but it takes it down to nine but it casts a stoneforge mystic yep we gain a life 
What are they getting to hand? More of the sky claves to hand. I see, I see. And they swing in for three. Well, we're going to take it. We're not going to bounce our batter skull, I don't think. Are we going to equip? Yeah, we're going to equip. Knight of Autumn as well, I see. That's very good. Well, equip it to our Archon. Get in there for seven. Opponent's down to two. We're back up to 14. So more, just more would just be defensive. They don't have enough power to stop a flyer for long. And they can only cast one spell per turn. Did we get him? Oh, no attacks, they pass the turn. So it's just defensive more, is it? Oh, go to combat. Swing with the Archon. Yep, okay. So they're, okay, well, we'll look, we're gonna risk it. We're gonna try and draw removal right now. Okay, more enters the battlefield. You know what, we've got, we've got one more white mana. We're gonna try and draw removal again. No. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Our Archon can eat up that wild Nakatl for breakfast. We're up to 21. Just pass it there. They'd have to have a pretty impressive turn to get us from here. Okay, they scoop up the match. Lovely. Yeah, they couldn't beat it. That Leon and Arbiter. Oh, oh, I love Leon and Arbiter. I love me some taxes. I love me some taxes. Alrighty, so what did we think of Red Beam's Green White Coco deck? I loved it. I hope you guys loved it. It was a blast to play. Uh, we went positive, which is a nice surprise for leagues. We often don't. <laughs> One of the downsides of playing a different deck every week for a league is you often don't know all the intricacies of the deck and you don't have time to study and you don't get any better. So playing a deck like this, which has cards I'm very familiar with, felt really good. I really like the protection creatures. So because there's so much prowess, so much death shadow, so much scourge of the skyclaves, they're just really good. And so rather than taxing your opponents with Thalia, you're trapping their removal spells in hand because they can't target the annoying creatures that are blocking your creatures all the time. So in normal taxes, when Arbiter is punishing players for playing too many colors and ruining their fetches, we're actually punishing players for running streamed line decks with a limited number of colors. So if you've got a five color deck with a wide variety of removal, or you're playing a mono white deck, you're actually able to remove our creatures without a lot of trouble. But if you're running a red black deck or a black green deck or a Jun deck style thing, we can actually punish you quite effectively with our protection creatures. Also because the Leonin Arbiter is in the side, it doesn't affect our Stoneforge package in game one, so we don't have to make those hard choices. Archon of Emeria, making our opponent's lands enter tapped and then only being able to cast one spell per turn, kind of acts in a similar way to Thalia. It restricts their ability to play things on curve. So I'm very happy with that. Love the four Knight of Autumns in the main. Love the four Skyclave Apparitions in the main. That felt really good. We lost a couple of games to, you know, yay, taxes. Um, but mostly I feel like they were lost to some mulligans. Um, we lost to a combo deck that Honestly, that, that combo was ridiculous and I love it and I kind of want to play that deck now. But losing to taxes, yeah, they were just... I think we mulled... Did we mull to five in game one and then into four in game two? And we just didn't draw the tools we needed to cast our spells on curve, which is what they're trying to do, trying to stop us doing that. Uh, they flickered out our land so we couldn't play a defensive creature to block their flicker wisps and they got in. Disappointing, uh, but hey, it means Taxes is doing all right, so that's good. I've had a lot of fun playing with the deck. I hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as I have enjoyed playing it. And until next time, have fun.